1990, the people living in the towns of Heston and Gosol were going about their daily lives when quite literally something you don't see every day dropped out of the sky. The result was a nightmare that seemed to have no end, as one of the scariest looking tornadoes I have ever seen captured on photos or video ever raked over them like a farmer tilling their field, part of a powerful early season storm that spawned over 60 tornadoes before it was done. This is the story of the towns in the path of it, and the never-ending nightmare that was the tornado family that hit Heston and Gosol on March 13th, 1990. The storm that would spawn this day of terror, along with moments that almost sound like they were ripped straight out of a tornado action movie, including its own twins, twins moment like from the new Twister sequel, more on that later, caused the March 1990 Central United States tornado outbreak. Regions across the Midwest from Iowa to Texas were raked over on March 13th by between 59 and 64 confirmed tornadoes. Different sources I read gave a different number, but nonetheless on minor discrepancies, Two of these tornadoes were F5s, and there was also a possible long track F4 that persisted for over 131 miles, assuming it wasn't a family of tornadoes. That one might get a video too later down the line, but for now, let's talk about the brewing of the storm that spawned all these monsters, including the one that the video today is focusing on, the tornado family that struck Heston and Gosol. It began on March 12th. Meteorological data indicated the presence of a closed low-pressure area and a trough essentially entrenched across the western portions of the United States. Meanwhile, over the southeastern United States, there was a high-pressure area, and both sides were gearing up for a cage match. A low-level jet stretching out from southern Texas all the way into Iowa formed the battleground. And it was here that moisture from the Gulf of Mexico was carried northward, and the resulting mixture was about to pop off like an atomic bomb. Here you can see the results of this atomic bomb, as two tornadoes merge into one on March 13th. These and the other tornadoes were fed, their energy brewing in the overnight hours of March 12th and 13th, as convection developed and moved across Oklahoma. The atmosphere only grew more and more volatile as the early morning hours of March 13th wore on. Scientists and researchers all noted that the ingredients were lining up in a very familiar and very scary way. It was almost identical to the conditions that spawned previous tornado outbreaks. Surface temperatures were warming, there were strengthening low-level fields and veering winds, and an atmospheric profile near Heston, Kansas indicated a convective available potential energy, which is the measure of the capacity of the atmosphere to support upward air movement that can lead to cloud formation and storms, number of 3200 JKG by noon UTC. Now, if you're not a meteorologist like me, you might be wondering what that means. To put it very simply, it means bad. It means bad things are going to happen. And it was here, over Heston, Kansas that the cage match was going to go down, and the time for the first round was drawing near. The bell was about to ring. The interior of the United States was about to be clawed by a monster that was growing in the sky above it. A monster that would have as many as 64 claws, 44 of which would strike in Kansas and Nebraska. As the trough continued to approach from the west, enhanced defluence, a key factor in the formation of atmospheric fronts and the explanation for the variety of cloud shapes, focused across the region. In the afternoon, the surface low progressed into western Kansas and Oklahoma. Convergence continued across the dry line, enhancing with each minute that passed. The evening of March 13th, further convergence along the dry line, where the proverbial bullseye for the tornado supercells would be, continued. This monstrous system was about to birth tornadoes in the warm sector and actual blizzards in the cold section of it, and it was still gaining power. And now we come to the key moment. If we scan among the long list of F0 and F1 and F2 tornadoes that were spawned by this storm, we find the occasional powerful one that ripped through the area. Castleton to Heston saw an F5, but so did Gosel and Northeast Hillsboro and then the powerful F4 that possibly persisted for over 130 miles. Now we come to it at last. Shown here, passing near Interstate 135, at the same time that it was ripping through people's homes, the F5 tornado that struck Heston, and then later would strike Ghostal after it was reborn, spawned from one powerful thunderstorm, began 
when the first of the family touched down just after 4.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time, northeast of the city of Pretty Prairie. Starting off as an F1 to F2 strength tornado, it widened considerably as it approached Haven and then the Little Arkansas River, leaving a damaged path three-fourths of a mile wide. Thankfully, it was still in a low-populated area, and it continued to move and pass northeast of Little Arkansas, where the damage path dropped to only half a mile in width. Photos like the one you see on screen of it, and we're just looking at a moment ago, have helped scientists study the tornado itself and the actions that it did. How it moved, its rotation, all that stuff. More so than just radar imagery can. The tornado went through multiple shapes and sizes, from a wedge at the start to turning tall and narrow, suggesting a full reorganization of the tornadic circulation. The most extreme damage caused by this tornado was done during its long, thin rope stage when it was a tall and narrow funnel. In Burton, a city in Harvey County, Kansas, a six-year-old boy was killed all but in the arms of his family as they huddled together when the tornado struck their home. The chimney fell into the basement with them where they were sheltering from the monster. As the tornado only seemed to grow in strength, this black cloud descended on Heston like the incarnation of death itself. Like the reaper was going door to door, knocking for souls. At F5 strength, the tornado destroyed 226 homes and 21 businesses in the city's western section. 90 of those homes were described as beyond repair, and an additional 30 were completely swept away and destroyed. The tornado tore a path of horror and destruction through the city and caused $25 million in damages in the county before continuing to move to the northeast. Right outside of town, the tornado destroyed an additional 20 farms and other rural but still populated areas. Debris from the city of Heston were found 115 miles away in Nebraska. To scientists, however, what happened next was the most interesting part of the tornado's life. We have arrived at the twins, twins moment of the storm. But the nightmare isn't ending. It's only being reborn anew. Take a look at these images again. What you are looking at are two tornadoes combining into one. They are converging, birthing a new, enhanced, more powerful monster. A second tornado touched down less than a mile from the main one. As the first monster weakened, they traveled almost on parallel paths until they intersected and combined. This was a tornado family, and the event itself is something known as a tornado handoff, where an old mesocyclone and tornado sort of backs off, and a new mesocyclone and tornado further downwind becomes dominant. The newly born second tornado grew more intense, sucked the other into a satellite orbit around it, and then they became one powerful monster, one even more intense than the first tornado had been. The rejuvenated monster then re-intensified and roared into Gosel, where an elderly woman lost her life. Around 60 people were injured, but amazingly, despite how violent the tornado family was, there were only two fatalities. The tornado was on the ground for around 50 miles. The tornado left damage in Gosel described as Extreme F5 by the National Weather Service. Ted Fujita said the second tornado was the most intense he had ever studied. And that is quite a statement considering some of the other tornadoes we've talked about that he said the same thing about before. Gives you an idea of just how strong this thing was. The researchers and survey teams called it one of the most violent tornadoes ever documented in history up to that time. Now sadly, while there's many photos of the first and many videos of the first, there's not very many of the second one. It's kind of a shame that we don't have much to look at of this second monster. Speaking of, the monster finally died just northeast of the city of Risley after passing Gosel and Hillsboro and traveling 22 miles. The same storm that gave birth to this shockingly powerful monster produced another member of the family. A weaker F2 tornado, it was long-tracked and destroyed farms and four homes, but left no damage behind on the level of the storm's first sinister spawn. For many in the path of the original monsters, life went on, but it would never be the same. Damage like what was observed is something you can't just shrug off. It stays with you. And since my last tornado video, I've had a close call with a tornado too. And... While I can't truly in any way understand what these people went through, I have just the faintest inkling of an idea 
but only that. Even with that, it's as humbling as it is haunting. I, I was lucky. I was narrowly missed by a rather weak tornado, but nonetheless, hearing that roar, that freight engine roar, that's not an exaggeration. That is what they actually sound like. Coming closer and getting louder, and as the wind outside suddenly increased and got to tornadic levels, somehow, even though it was already night outside, it got darker. It Humbling as it is haunting is the perfect description of it. It really is. And I, it gives me a kind of different perspective on making a video like this nowadays. You know, I only experienced just a little inkling of it. It had to have only been an F-Zero, but... So I can't claim to know, nor would I, know what people who have been through an F-4 or an F-5 have been like, but just hearing that roar, it gives me just the faintest inkling of an idea, but only an idea, and nothing more. And that is kind of terrifying. But with that, we have reached the end of the story, and I'll be talking more about tornadoes in the coming weeks and months, from modern history to some much older ones, including a very famous one from the 1700s that supposedly ripped skeletons out of their graves, and the rest of the F5s from the 1974 super outbreak, and next year for its 100th anniversary, I'll be doing something big for the tri-state tornado. So, Stick around for those, check out my playlist on Tornado Documentaries, and like and subscribe if you enjoyed videos on this topic, so I know you do, and you want to see more of them. And if there are any tornado stories, individual tornadoes, outbreaks, tornado mysteries, or anything like that that you want to see me cover, suggest it in a comment, because I do read them all, and I do take suggestions. This one was a suggestion. But for now, have a good one, everyone, and thank you for watching.